All right. What is this abomination? Well, I have about uh, a three or four week collection of brass from the range. This is just my brass, what I've shot in the last few weeks. And I'm hoping that this new creation will uh, help me sort through it a little quicker. This isn't my usual electronics video, but it is electrical. So let's start at the beginning and take a look at uh, where this came from and, well, what it really used to be. This story begins when I decided to upgrade this uh, Turbo 2200 Lyman Tumbler and replace it with a much bigger model, the uh, 20, what is this, a 3500 Magnum, uh, also from Lyman. Uh, really good. This thing will really run a lot of brass through. And then I decided, well, what am I going to do with this? So, came up with the... I, I had seen uh, a video of somebody, or actually a, cut some pictures of someone who had taken their shell sorters, this kind of set right here that you see, and stacked them on top of a bucket and put them on top of an old tumbler. I thought, well, hey, I could do that, but let's see if we can make some improvements. To get started, we just need to uh, remove the bins from the tumbler. In this case, it's an auto flow, so you got to take off that piece. Down here, one of the improvements, or one of the things was that the uh, bottom of the bucket, this is all very flat, but the bottom of the bucket has uh, a small bump on it right here, and this rim right here, and, and the uh, rim, and so it was uh, really just connecting only right here. So what I did was I just put um, little uh, rubber bumper feet on the uh, bottom of this, or on top of this thing right here, and it uh, seems to uh, do the job. It now gets really good contact with the entire bottom of the bucket. Next step was to drill a quarter inch hole right here in the bottom of the bucket. Oh, I don't like working on camera cameras at an odd angle here. Um, so you just need to drill a small hole in the middle, get it as centered as you can. Really want to try and find that. There's a small, usually it'll be a small uh, plastic uh, f bump from the uh, injection mold process right there usually on a bucket and so you can just kind of mark that take that as center drill that out then thread it through the rod and you're going to need to uh, bolt it down really well you will also want you want to use a large probably want to use a large fender washer in this case I just use the one that actually came uh, with the lid of the old tumbler and you're gonna put the bucket on then thread that on, use a small uh, small nut right here, and then lock it down with another nut. In this case, I just used the uh, wing nut and other hardware that came with the tumbler. Now I have the uh, stack of the three normal shell sorters here. And with one minor change, really, the um, I used the rim of some old buckets that I was going to get rid of from Home Depot and cut those off to make a spacer. These normally nest very close together with maybe like a half inch clearance between them and that just wasn't going to provide room for the shells to bounce around. So with this that provided an additional about two inches of space between these so that's enough for the shells to bounce around uh, between the layers. At least that seems to work. You could go uh, a little bit higher maybe on it but this seemed to work for me. Just uh, put a couple of uh, screws in to hold them on and then uh, hot snot glue over the end of the screw just to uh, keep it locked in place and keep from uh, having it hit your hit your hand there. Did the same on the uh, 40 cal blue. Now on the uh, 9 millimeter plate, the black one and the, the shell sorter at the bottom, it will also trap 380 and I didn't want that. So I had the I have the uh, shell sorter plate for the 380, and normally it nests into like a 45 plate or something like that. But then it's a mess trying to get everything uh, lined up. So in this case, I just cut out the bottom of the nine millimeter uh, tray here and fit, and then uh, I had to grind down the edges 
a little bit of this plate to get it to fit flat in the bottom. And then to keep it seated there, I put um, some small screws in the bottom here, around the edge, around the rim, just drilled some holes at an angle, put some uh, small number, oh, probably number six screws in. Then I went around the back, cut the uh, excess of the screws off, and then more hot snot glue uh, on the here to just make sure that it would stay in place and again not to catch your hand on it. And that's it. It's a pretty simple machine. Let's try it out. So with the machine all put together, how loud is it? Well, it's, uh, it's pretty loud. Let's get a dB meter down here. I guess you can hear that on the headset mic, I'm sure. And uh, there's the reading. That wasn't the, the max, but 106 right there. That's, that's pretty loud. So I definitely need to use hearing protection with this thing. So here's my process i come up with. I just grab handfuls, throw a couple few in. There's the uh, 45s all done. And we're down to 40s. And we're down to uh, 9. Let's test it with a little bit of uh, 380 as well to make sure that that actually falls through. I don't have any 380 uh, probably in the bucket from the range, but I'll throw some uh, throw some in here and let's just watch it go through as well. I don't see any of the uh, shiny 380 still in here. Looks like that's all gone. And yep, there we have it. The 380 and uh, 223. All down in the bottom, all the junk. So, works just the way I want. Hopefully this will speed up my process. Maybe this can help you out too. See what you've got laying around and uh, bolt something together. Now, this normally has to be turned on and off by a small push button switch down here, but not gonna be really convenient when I really only want this on for, you know, 15 or 20 seconds at a shot, probably, so, I put together a foot pedal switch. This one was really only designed to switch um, low voltage. You can get some out there that are available that will switch 5 amps. Maybe you'll even find some that switch 10. I didn't look around too much because this was in the junk box already. And all I did was then uh, hook it to a solid state relay that I heat synced to a small piece of metal here. That needs um, a few volts. It needs three volts to operate, and rather than putting in a power supply, I just took a uh, AA battery holder here, strapped it on, and that was it. So I can use this. This th these uh, relays, solid state relays, only need a few milliamps, and so the 2,000, 2,200 milliamp hour uh, capacity of a couple of AA's is going to be just fine. I, you know, I'll probably change those batteries out every couple of years and that's good enough for me. So um, when I hit the switch uh, in the demo, the uh, this comes on for just a few seconds as I do that. Let up, I'm good to go. So I don't have to get my head and my hands down here near this crazy moving uh, machine when it's running. So that was, that was the uh, final improvement I made on the process. So if you have an old tumbler, and of course any reloader is gonna have these around the house, Maybe you can make something to get put something together like this.